Uh, a little over a year ago, I made a video about Venmo business accounts, so Venmo for business. And now that they've been available for a little while, uh, I think it's time to review Venmo for business. Uh, and if using Venmo for business purposes still makes sense in 2022. I'll break this video into five parts. Uh, if some of this is too basic for you or there's something specific that you're here for, feel free to use the timestamps in the description and the comments to jump to whatever it is that you came here for. So first, let's just kind of talk about the high level of what Venmo for business is. If you're not familiar with Venmo somehow, you've probably been living under a rock for the past five years, but you know what? That's okay. Venmo is a peer-to-peer -peer payments app that is very, very popular. And by peer-to-peer, -peer, that means it's designed for me as a person to send it to you as a person, generally between friends. It was bought in 2012 by PayPal, so it's actually been around for quite a while, but it remains its own app and has kind of its own features. And PayPal has allowed it to kind of do its own thing uh, separate from PayPal. The primary purpose has always been for friends and family to be able to send money back and forth. So if you're at a restaurant, uh, literally the original use case from the founders was if you're in a restaurant and you need to split the bill, like the easiest way is just to have someone pay it and then Venmo each other the rest of the payments. But over the years, uh, as Venmo has become more popular, the app has started to commonly be used for small businesses to accept payments quickly from Venmo users. A lot of users, especially young people, really love using Venmo and it's just super simple and they're just used to it. Maybe I am a creative, like for a long time when I was selling my art, a lot of people would say, hey, can I just Venmo you that? And as a business owner or a very small business owner, I'm not gonna say no. So I would accept those payments. The problem with doing this is that it's technically against Venmo's terms of service. I don't know of anyone that's ever gotten in trouble for doing that. A few years ago though, Venmo launched Venmo for business. So now you can officially sign up your business on Venmo and le legally accept payments there. That begs the question, why would you wanna do that? And this part is about the fees. All credit and debit card transactions cost money. Sorry, there's no way to accept credit or debit cards for free. Uh, if someone's claiming that they can do that, they're likely scamming you in some way. The fees are actually charged in part by the card companies. So Visa, MasterCard, American Express, whatever the actual card company is, that's how one of the ways that they make money is by charging to run that transaction through their network. And then usually there's another fee involved. That's why you'll see like a percent fee and a, and a base currency fee. Uh, there's another fee involved for the payment processor. So that would be Venmo, that would be Stripe, PayPal, Square, Cash App, Clover. There's like all kinds of different payment processors and they're all constantly competing, saying that they're the cheapest, even though you could easily go online and find out that that's not the case. But they charge a fee because that's how they stay in business and that's how they make money. So if something like Venmo, the way that they make money is by charging these fees. So if you want to use this company, like that's how you pay for it basically. But the good news is that Venmo's fees are pretty much the lowest that you can find anywhere, which is interesting because the, the fees are actually... 1.9% plus 10 cents. So for every transaction on the business side that you're going to do, it's, you're going to be charged 10 cents. I think it's over a dollar. There's a certain like base amount that that starts at. Um, and then the 1.9%. So if you are doing big payments, that 1.9% can add up. But when you compare that to PayPal, which it depends which way you're interacting with PayPal, you're usually paying 2.4% the whole way up to 3. percent four, 3.49%, uh, stripes around that 2.4, 3% rent, uh, realm. Basically every other payment processor charges a higher fee than this 1.9%. Um, there's no clue as to how long this is going to last, but it's a good deal, uh, while it does. Um, and they're probably never going to go above PayPal, which is already one of the cheaper payment processors anyway. So in short, as far as, as fees go, uh, Venmo turns out to be a really great option for accepting payments from customers. Another thing that is interesting to note is taxes. So <laughs> the only two things that are guaranteed in life are death and drinking water. Oh no, taxes. <laughs> but yeah, Venmo for business, they automatically report earnings over $600 to the IRS. PayPal does this, eBay does this. They're basically required to do this. So for small businesses who are already paying their taxes, Venmo for Business actually makes paying taxes easier. However, if you were hoping to use Venmo for Business to skate around paying your taxes, uh, sorry to disappoint you, but you can't escape the IRS. 
If you're worried about paying taxes for your business, I highly suggest using something like capital that will automatically set aside 25 to 35% of any income that comes into your bank account. You can set it up so that it would trigger when something lands in your bank account over, say, $100, it takes 25% of that out uh, and puts that into a separate savings account. That way, you basically don't notice that it's gone. Uh, it keeps you from having to be emotionally partying with your money each month. Uh, or worse, getting caught with a huge tax bill at the end of the year that you're not prepared for. Part four, I want to talk about some of the features. One of my biggest disappointments uh, from the last video that I made, I kind of posited that, hey, maybe they'll have this like marketplace and they'll be able to compete with Facebook Marketplace and Etsy. Um, they're not quite doing that. They're doing some features that are, are similar to that, um, but it doesn't seem like they're interested in going full-blown in that, that realm. Some of the features that they do have, though, is your business can show up on users' feeds. So if someone buys from you, just like if they buy from their friends, it can show up and say, hey, um, so-and-so bought something from your business. And then another person can click on that business and, and could buy from, from you as well. Um, so it drives attention to their friends and their network. They have a, a, a marketing consent, which basically... The market your business thing, I've tried this and I can't really quite, it, it, it allows you to show up in search, uh, but it doesn't seem to do much else than that. Um, and it doesn't seem like people are really using Venmo to search that much yet. It also allows you to send emails, um, which they kind of automate the emails, but it'll send emails to people that are purchasing from you, which is a little frustrating because I would prefer that they actually just give me those emails, but I think there's certain privacy regulations that they're trying to follow. Uh, another really cool thing that they uh, have is these like QR codes that make it really easy to share. Uh, and you can even get a QR code that you can print out at your business so that you can accept it. I've actually seen this a lot at the farmer's market. So someone can quickly pay with Venmo as their payment processor, which is good for you because the fees are lower and it's good for your uh, consumers because a lot of them like using Venmo. They already have their bank account set up there. They use it all the time to send money back and forth with friends. Another feature that's available is tipping. Um, if you look out at articles on like why you should or shouldn't use Venmo for business stuff, a lot of them will be like, well, you can't, you know, set up tips. Those are old articles because now you can. I haven't used it yet, but it seems like pretty straightforward. So you can accept tips if you're maybe running this through a coffee shop or like at the farmer's market, something like that. What features do you think would be cool? What features are not uh, that I didn't just list do you think uh, Venmo should should do? And finally, uh, let's answer some of the questions that have came in from the last video. Uh, there were lots of great questions in the comments. I tried my best to answer them quickly. I'm not the best at answering questions very quickly on YouTube, but I thought these might be helpful for context. Um, one user says, is the only way you can get payment in my account if the other person also has Venmo? Basically, can you use it as a credit card processor? Um, and also a similar question was wanting to see the options to see how people pay. To, how does payment work? So basically, they use their Venmo account to pay you. So no, right now at least, there's no way to kind of set it up as a separate card processor, or like swipe card, that kind of thing. It's literally for people that have Venmo already set up. It's basically a great addition to add, but you're still going to need something like Square to, or Clover to like actually take card transactions. Uh, but Venmo is a really great thing to add because A, the fees are lower and also users really love using it. Uh, will this automatically generate a report at the end of tax season letting you know how much you paid uh, or need to pay? Actually, yes, this was not a feature originally, but uh, it is now. They have pretty detailed transaction data and then basically a really simple statement that you can download as a CVS, CSV, which is like an Excel file. And yeah, the, they send you a 1099K, which so they'll send the IRS a form. You make over $600 and they'll also send you a form that tells you how much uh, you need to pay, assuming your address and stuff is set up properly on there. So you'll want to make sure that your address is set up. Um, has anything changed about business from now, basically from when I made that video? Because I'm seeing that people say that they can't get approved. Uh, there was a period of time where Venmo was holding back the number of people that could sign up at a time. I think they were having issues with some of the tests that they were running and when they were first trying to get it launched. But I think it should be all clear now. They do review accounts when you post them. So if you have something that gets flagged as a potential, potentially being against their terms of service, like it's gambling or, or uh, you'll have to read the terms of service to find exactly what it is. 
those could get flagged and, and you could have issues getting approved in those circumstances. Also, in certain countries, it might be an issue there. It's really easy in the US and Canada. I'm not sure how it is in Europe, but some other countries, you might have some issues. Mostly, it's more to do with the way that the banks and the card processing works, which is why uh, crypto, minus the whole crypto crash thing, uh, has some really strong use cases. Uh, will there be other fees besides the 1.9% uh, and the 10 cents per transaction? Have you seen that? No, uh, there's no like monthly fees or anything. It's just those straight transaction fees. There is a fee to withdraw your money if you want to withdraw it instantly. Uh, which is basically just a convenience fee to withdraw quickly. That's the same as it is on the personal side. But if you add a bank account, can wait a couple days, and usually it happens like within a day. Uh, if you can wait a couple days to withdraw that money, then uh, there's no fee. What are the chances people sign up and then they change the rate after blah, blah. Basically, what's the chances that they do a bait and switch where they're like, hey, here's these mm -hmm. cheap fees, and then we're going to add all this extra uh, fee. Um, they haven't done that yet. Uh, but it's still possible. It probably won't ever go higher than PayPal's fees. So it's still probably worthwhile setting up. Basically, at the end of the day, if you are using Venmo personally, or you think your customers are using Venmo personally, it's worth setting up a Venmo for business account, getting that QR code. If you're doing physical events, having that at your booth or using it online as an option for people to check out. If you have any other questions, leave them down in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer. Also, other people tend to be pretty good and a little bit faster than me at answering. Hope this was helpful for you. See you.